Praise God. Do you feel welcomed in this house? Amen. Hey, the Lord will do two things. Amen. Whatever has um, clung on, uh, you walk out of this place free. By the power of God in this house. Not just in this room. That, you know, God's here. I came in the name of Jesus. Whew, who loves Jesus? We came in the name of Jesus. We came in um, the unoma, in the character and the authority of Jesus Christ. And in that place, he manifests. We didn't come for a show. We didn't come to hear from a man. We came to unite together, very, very aware of the one who has united us, and that is Jesus. Hallelujah. And so whatever you walked in here that you shouldn't have walked in here with, you walk here without, free. And then you walk out of here with fresh anointing and fresh power. For God is raising up a people who don't just know God, don't just say that they know God, know about God, but who truly know Him. Amen. People that don't just talk about His power, but walk in His power. So Father, I pray for the life in Jesus Christ to be manifest in this local body in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the breaking open of the Word of God, the bread of life, and the Word that is a living power. Hallelujah. Amen, that feeds a living force called the force of faith, which is our victory. And Father, I thank you as we've been singing it, we, we shall experience all that you have in store for us. Hallelujah. Everything, all your goodness. Like the old time preacher, we say, something good. Whew, come on now. Something good is happening right now. Who perceives it? Something good, something awesome is happening right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Whew, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God is good. He's so wonderful. He's king. Amen. You know, we're going to be, um, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be baptizing some people. Hey, welcome to a funeral. You didn't realize you came to a funeral funeral but uh we're gonna bury s some people this morning um you know so there's gonna be a burial no, but they're also also gonna be a resurrection too praise the lord so you know there's some some members i don't like too much and i and i wish they would sign up for the baptism so i can bury them and then keep them buried no no, no that's that's not the gospel that's not the gospel you know everyone's got a fleshly side and you know i'm, I'm messing but thank god he we got buried with christ but we were raised up with Jesus too. And so what, what baptism does, not just for the person who's getting baptized, but what baptism does for all of us who witness a baptism, it puts into our consciousness the reality of what happened for us by our Savior Jesus and what the Father did with, with us and Jesus. We were crucified. Our old man was crucified. Amen. Amen. And we were buried with Christ. And it puts it in, into our consciousness. We see it visibly. We see, we see it. Wow, man, someone's going down. Their old person, their old nature, their old former sin-dominated personality has been buried when they gave their life to Christ. They, they received that reality. Hallelujah. And then they came up a new person in Jesus Christ. New spirit. And so I pray that, you know, as we witness it, not just for those who are getting baptized, but as we see it, it puts it into our consciousness. Yes, it's no longer I who live. The old man is dead. Amen. I said, the old man is dead. The old man is dead. For, for any man who is in Christ Jesus, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, is a brand new creature. Unlike anything that's ever been in existence before. Different kind of person. You know, people would uh, witness Jesus walk in and say, what kind of man is this? 
He doesn't, he doesn't fear the storm. He doesn't fear the waves. He doesn't fear uh, uh, de- uh, uh, demonic spirits. He doesn't fear sickness. He doesn't fear touching and hugging and loving on lepers. He's not afraid, he's not afraid of contagious diseases. He doesn't gossip. What kind of man is this? He speaks and casts out devils with one word. One word. What kind of guy is this? A different kind of man. You haven't seen this kind of man before, have you? No, that's why we're asking. What kind of man is this? Yeah. That is how you ought to be. People ought to look at you and go, something different about you, Dean. What is it? You're not like ordinary people. Come on, we're peculiar. We're peculiar. Getting more peculiar. As the world gets more fleshly and worldly, you know, um, amen. We're getting strange. We're getting stranger. You've seen nothing. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That stranger just means different. Amen, peculiar. Getting more peculiar. And if, the, if society doesn't agree, then that's a good indication for me. I think that's like, is it David Ellis? No. David Ingalls. Getting more peculiar. I know, I'm not going to sing, you know, because it's getting really peculiar right now. And some people are wondering, where have I rocked up to? You know, I brought my friend. You know, I've got guests here. You, know. you understand what I'm saying? Peculiar just means different. That doesn't say, you know, we're on a high horse or we're better than everyone else. Um, Amen. Our mandate and our mission is to help people and love people and not stand on our little, you know, pedestals and look down upon people. It's to bring people up. Amen. And help people, love people. But I'm telling you, when you got born again, you got recreated. You got refathered from above. You have a new daddy. Yeah, but, you know, my, my bloodline, I'm telling you, there may have been all kinds of stuff in your previous bloodline, but let me say this. You became brand new, and you were given a brand new victorious bloodline the moment you got born again. Don't, don't, don't feed into a demonic lie. Do you know, I was meditating on this. I, I, wrote, up, I wrote up the notes for, uh, I had a whole bunch of notes that I ministered when I, when I uh, delivered the teachings on, uh, spirit, soul, body, and identity. And so I was writing up the, the notes on that. And so we're publishing that on Wednesday, so you can have, you can have my notes, you know. If, if, if you want them, you know, they're going to be posted online for you. And I was like going back on some, some things, and I saw the first, this is what the devil does, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you have got to step into the mentality of the Word of God. I'll say it again. You've got to step into the mentality of the Word of God. So I I was looking at the first, again, we're saying tempted man. At the very beginning, you know it. Hey, you won't surely die if you eat from that tree. God said if you eat from the tree, you'll surely die. That's, That's what the enemy always does. He always tries to contradict the Word of God, twist it. God didn't really say that. Listen, God's not a man that he should lie. God, when God speaks, He creates. You understand? He, the devil is the father of lies. Our, Satan is the father of lies. Our father is the father of truth. And so he said this. Uh, Satan said to, to man, God knows if you eat from the tree, you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Do you know what? Man was already made like God. And it jumped out to me. Fresh. I've seen it. I've preached it for over a decade. Um, These things in India specifically. Jumped out to me afresh. You know what the devil's always doing? He's trying to convince you that you do not have what you already have. So he gets you to believe I need healing I need all this stuff why don't you just step into the mentality of the word of God and go I have it in Christ Jesus 
because that is the spiritual reality. But Satan will try and convince you that you have not got what you have got. Thank you for your overwhelming amen and agreement. Amen says, so be that. I'll say it. Amen. Amen. I'm not trying to be blessed. I am blessed. I'm not trying to be forgiven. I am forgiven. I'm not trying to be set free. I am set free. I'm not trying to be healed. I am healed. Walk in the mentality of the Word of God. Amen. Talk like somebody who believes the Bible. This is what God's raising up. People who don't just know about God, but know God and know what God has done. Amen. Paul's prayers were, oh Lord, set them free. No. Lord, help them see, reveal unto them, give them a spirit of wisdom, a revelation and the knowledge of Him. Open the eyes of their understanding that they may know the hope of His calling, the riches of their inheritance in the saints. Let them see what they have in Christ Jesus. Oh, man. The exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. Let them see it. Amen. Thank you for sending your son and giving us everything. I'll tell you what. What Satan did in Adam, God reversed in Christ Jesus. All the damage done through Adam, Jesus reversed it in. uh, God the Father reversed it in, in Christ. Hallelujah. This is why we're very grateful. Amen. This is why we've got a lot to sing about and praise God about. Amen. This is why the songs come up in your spirit all the time. Come on. We could worship for another hour. Who could worship for another hour? Another two hours. We're not waiting on God to do anything that is already done. He's already done it. We're not waiting, you know, for God to do the next thing before we're grateful. We're grateful because he's done so much. I sing praises to your name, O Lord, for your name, I'm jumping right in, is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises to your name. by the spirit of this world nothing for greater is he 
he that is in you than he that is in the world. I believe that. He is greatly worthy. For all eternity, you gotta get 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 you gotta get okay with my singing because because I'm gonna live forever. And for all of eternity, I'm gonna sing. And we may be neighbors, you know, in heaven, because you know, spirit beings will you know live forever, you know. And so you hey, watch this face, you know. I'm just warming up, I'm just practicing. But when I get it, you know, when you get into the glory realm, you know, you know, I'll tell you what, when, when you hear, hear people who've been quizzed and interviewed about heaven and stuff, and they talk about, um, they, they talk about, oh man, the, the beautiful worship that pervades er, almost every person I've heard who had a visitation of heaven came back, you know, died, you know, was brought back to life and came back. They talk about the worship that pervades the whole atmosphere of heaven. The worship. Huh? That's what we're going to enjoy. <laughs> yes. So, so he's saying, I'm looking forward to that worship, not your, not your singing. That's, that's what he's saying. He's so polite on the front row. Stuart, why do you put this man on the front row right here? I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. Amen. With a glorified body, with a uh, glorified vertical, uh, vocal cords. Yeah. All that stuff. Worship in the king. Get used to it. Praise God. Get used to it. For the Lord is great. Worship pervades the atmosphere. We got songs on our heart. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I've got a message and you know I like the Spirit of God has been speaking to me. I'm gonna I'm gonna preach for a little bit. Um Next week, I'm certainly going to continue. But the Lord wants us to wise up. Amen. He wants us to walk in wisdom. This word that we're opening up is full full of wisdom. Um, It's full of wisdom. You know, we've been looking at 2 Corinthians 12, 1. He said, Paul Paul said, and you can play a little bit behind me. Thank you, sir. He said, I will come into visions he said, I will come into visions and revelations um, of the Lord. <laughs> of the Lord. I'm, I'm coming into seeing things I've never, my eyes have never seen. I'm coming into hearing things I've never heard. I'm coming into experiences uh, with the Father that I've never experienced. I'm coming in. Come on, who else is coming in to visions and revelations of the Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, every time you open the Word of God, the entrance of God's Word, if you open wide your heart, give it a wide entrance, I'm telling you, the entrance of God's Word brings light. And light helps you see. Light helps you see. And um, it's awesome. The Word always gives, gives birth, you could say, to, to fresh revelation and fresh application of that Word. Amen. And so you may hear something and gain understanding, get, gain, gain wisdom, but, but that it means nothing unless it's applied. So the Word of God always brings fresh revelation. You learn something fresh every time you open the Word of God. It's awesome. And there's a fresh application, how to apply it to your children. Amen. How to love your wife. And all the husbands said, amen, you know, I need that. Hey Amen, we need it. I, I'm not even joking. You know, we need it. I need wisdom how to love my wife. The women are very different. Hey Amen. Um, but it's awesome. Uh, and that's what, that's what makes this so powerful is the, w- w- the power lies in our, in our uh, uniqueness, but collectively as one. Hey Amen. It becomes very, very potent. Raising your kids. I, we need wisdom on that. Hey Amen. All our children are very different. Emery is very different to Avia. Avia is very different to Glor- Gloriana. They're all very different. I, well, I need wisdom. How I talk to Avia is different to how I talk. I don't have favorites. But you have to be led by the Holy Spirit of, of how, what to do and how to do what to do. 
You need you need light. You need wisdom. You need wisdom and not just you know, how many know um, we ought to speak the truth in, in, in love always. But not everything that is true needs to be said. Amen. It may be true that mom chills put on some weight, but you know, that's the truth. But 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 it's not necessary for me to say it on the mic. Oh gosh, you know. I love this guy. Who loves this guy? Come on. Who loves this guy? Show him your love. We love him. We love him. You know, we speak the truth in love. Um, But we need wisdom of how to speak. When to speak. So I'll say timing. Timing is very important. From, from, the, from the Passion Translation, notice this scripture, Proverbs 24, verse 5. Proverbs 24, verse 5 from the TPT. It says, wisdom can make anyone into a mighty warrior and revelation knowledge increases strength. Ah, that's awesome. Hallelujah. Wisdom, notice what it does. It makes anyone, anyone. If, if you're open to wisdom, no matter who you are, you get filled with fr- the spirit of wisdom and revelation. You get this word of God in you, tanked up in your spirit. You know, get, get the word in your spirit. Not nothing statements. Get the word of God in your, in your spirit. Not nothing statements. You know, if there's any area of your life, here's a bit of word of wisdom. If there's any area of your life that you, you know it, it, there is lack there, be it wisdom for relationships, be it finances, be it uh, health, be it whatever, if there's any area of your life area of your life whether it's lack then then you need to spend at least one hour every day amen listening to the word of God hearing yourself speak the word concerning that area that's missing in your life and get your spirit filled with the word not nothing statements that that are out there on YouTube on TED talks you know learning the power of blueberries and all that stuff Thank God for blueberries. You know, God made blueberries. They're good for us. But fill your spirit with the word of the Lord. Amen. Not cute little sayings, you know. Aren't you glad, you know, for, for the wave that, you know, took us and crashed us into, you know, the rock of ages. There's no power in that. You understand what I'm saying? A nothing statement. It may make it into a Clinton card, but... You, but what you need to make it into your spirit is the word of God. Because now with social media, everyone's posting stuff, you know. Um, the reason why my back is on the ground is because of my background. Oh, amen, brother. Woo-hoo. If we just change the, the I to, to we, even, even uh, illness will become wellness. Someone's like, whoa, that was, that was anointed. No, it was not anointed. It had no anointing on it at all. Um, it's just a play on words. A blind man hearing that is not going to get healed. <laughs> what we need to fill our, our spirits with is not motivational speeches, but the word of God that transforms. Words that are, that are, that are God-inspired. If there is any area of your life that is, you feel, man, there's lack there, fill your heart with the Word of God. Give entrance to the Word of God. And the entrance of God's Word will bring bring light. And when you are filled, anyone who is filled with wisdom turns into a mighty warrior and revelation knowledge increases that person's strength. Amen. I'm not talking about getting things up here. Because that's mental ascent. Mental ascent, just kind of understanding things here. And then when you speak from what you know mentally versus what you speak um, from your heart, having received revelation from the Word of God, when you just speak from your head, mental ascent sounds like faith, but it never gets the, the results of the true spirit of faith. 
And that's why you get a lot of people disappointed because they're just trying to get this stuff intellectually. And it's not working for them. You need to get it in your spirit, man. And how you get it in is through gates. Everyone say gates. Gates. Your eye gate, your ear gate, amen. Your mouth gate, your eyes, your ears, your mouth. You get the word in your spirit. You get it in the midst of your heart. Proverbs uh, chapter 4, verses 20 gives us instruction to give attention to these words. Incline your, incline your ear. Get set it before your eyes. Make sure you're, you're, you're seeing it physically. And I, it's going to get in the midst of your heart. When it does, that's it. The word is medicine to you. You know, medicine on a, on a, counter, a, count, a, a counter is just medicine on a counter. But you get that medicine in you, then it's going to have an effect. The word of God just off to the side it's not going to do anything for you there's no power in the word I, I've not experienced any power of, of, of well you've you got to get the medicine the word of God is your medicine you've got to get it in you once you get it in you you're going to experience the, the results of this medicine is this too simple this morning? Femi should we get you singing? no you know but something is rising up within us and you, you know oh man can I continue? Thank you, Lord. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Let me speak. Let this sink in your spirit for a while. I, I'm telling you, because if you pay attention to it, messages like this, you will avoid error. And, and you won't have to go through the school of hard knocks. Amen. Because people are going to have to make decisions. Some people, I'm going to get on to it. Some people are in a place right now. You're on like a cross section. You need, you need to make some decisions. There's a lot of noise around you. And, uh, and so this is for you. This is for you. Hallelujah. Proverbs 4, 7, it says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get, get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. You, you will never... You will never possess, grab a hold of, what you don't pursue. He said, go after it. Go after the spirit of wisdom. Amen. What does the Bible say? You know, seek and you shall what? You'll be so disappointed seeking, you know, having wasted all your time. Or is there, is there some finding after your seeking? Amen. You go all in. You seek with all your heart. You're going to find. Amen. Seek and you will get. So you've got to pursue. First of all, I'm talking about wisdom this morning. You've got to go after it. You've got to go, right, I'm going to get wisdom. I'm going to have to get in the Word of God. I'm going to find out uh, what the Word of God says concerning that area of my life that is lacking. I've got to do it. All right? So, okay, I've got to get it. Notice this. A few scriptures here this morning. So, uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15. Ephesians 5, 15. See to it. Don't fall asleep. I, I should, you know, I can see everyone. Amen. I should get a bag of uh, M&Ms, you know, those all really hard sweets. And just, I've got a really good throw. Ask my, my wife, you know, I'm a sports, practically a sports athlete, you know. And I can lob with accuracy. Amen. Especially people, you know, do you, do you know anyone who like uh, sleeps with their mouth open? I do. <laughs> I, I, I do, you know. So, so they're, they're the best, you know. I always think, man, if only I bought some M&Ms or Skittles. Yeah, Skittles as well. Because they're a little bit smaller. They could get right the back of someone's throat. And then everyone know, everyone will know that, oh, man, he, he, he's been found out. Now, what's got into me? Do not say everything you think, Joel. He said, see to it, Ephesians 5.15, see to it that you walk circumspectly and not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. Are the days evil, friends? What did he say? 
So you've got to see to it now that you go after wisdom. Don't be, don't be a fool now, not knowing what the will of the Lord is. Amen. Get wisdom. Can I say this? Getting wisdom is, is one thing. Pursuing it is one thing. Possessing it is, is great. But you could have wisdom. You can know what to do and not walk in it. You've got a guy called Jonah. He knew he got a word of wisdom, go to Nineveh. But do you know what he wanted to do? He wanted to go on to that Mediterranean cruise. And he jumped on that boat and said, man, forget that. I hate those people. <laughs> forget work this morning. I hate everyone at work. I'm not going there. Forget that church. I hate that church. I hate those people. I love you, you know, but some people think this way. And they, they try and go, they go the opposite. They get wisdom. God tells them, you know, marry, you know, be a part of that church or, you know, love on that family. What? The family that's been an enemy to me? Yeah, yeah. Do what Jesus said. You know, love your enemies. Do good to those who, you know, use you over and over again. Just, you know, walk in something called, called God's agape self-sacrificial love. So they get wisdom to do that. Hey, forgive them. Okay, yeah, I can do that. All right, next. Bless them. <laughs> Give them your car. What? No, they cheated me. They stole from me. And you tell me to do good? Yeah, that's what Jesus said. So you get a word of wisdom. And you've got it. You get it. You've got it. You've got it. You cried out for it. You asked for it. You got it. No. You do a Jonah, and you go the opposite direction. So say, walk in wisdom. And that takes you going against popular opinion and personal preference. Amen. Whoo, glory to God. Glory to God. So he jumps on the boat, and he ends up, he gets wisdom, does a walk in wisdom, gets on the Mediterranean uh, cruise, and then ends up in the belly of a fish. That's what it looks like to be a fool. And the Bible says, walk circumspect. And walk wisely. So you, you realize there's wisdom for you. Everyone realize you don't have all the answers. Just by looking at you, we can tell you don't have all the answers. Amen. I'm just messing. Please forgive me. I'm not always like this, you know, for those who are here for the first time. Um, but then when you get wisdom, because we all know it, that's the first, the first stage. You, you accept the fact that you need it. You understand you can't get it without pursuing it. You never, you never possess what you, what you don't go after. You get wisdom. Once you've got it, then you have to walk in it. Amen. You've got to walk in that wisdom. Apply it. It says in Proverbs chapter 4, 9, it says, Gain a beautiful crown when you walk in wisdom. Who gets this beautiful crown? Those who walk in wisdom. Proverbs 4, 12 from the NLT, it says, When you walk, you won't be held back. God doesn't want you held back. For 60 years trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work, God wants to give you answers. I'm telling you, God doesn't want you wasting time. He wants to, for you to experience the redeeming of time because the days are evil. So, so, so uh, if that sounds good to you, not to be held back, if you walk in this wisdom, then walk in what God's saying. No matter how difficult it may, may, may feel, God always gives grace with every word of instruction. Grace is a power to do it. Hallelujah. It says in 3 John verses, 3 John verses 4, the epistle of John, not the gospel of John, 3 John verse 4, it says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in truth. Walking in truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love this whole passage. This is a letter from a friend, John, to another friend, Gaius. And, um, and um, I, I like the emphasis in, in here. If, 
If I ask you a question, a pro, and I, I, I said this, fill, fill in the blank, a prosperous person, somebody who's very, very prosperous, is a person who has a lot of yeah, wisdom. A lot of people would say money. But it isn't, because wisdom is greater than money. Amen. And, and this whole aspect of like prosperity here, the heartbeat of God put from pen to paper, from a friend to a friend. It says in the first verse, the elder, John, John the elder, not the young kid who's following after Jesus. He's now matured some. He's an elder. He knows. How many know elders know more than uh, us young people, right? You know, they've lived a lot. Uh, here's John the elder, uh, you know, writing, writing. And he's saying, Lord, let me tell you what's, what's really valuable. It's not that you just pr prosper and be in, be in health. It's you prosper in all areas of your life. That prosperity would permeate every aspect of your life. And it isn't, you know, isn't, you know, getting, getting wealth and all that stuff. No, you get wisdom and wealth will take care of itself. Amen. People are so interested in getting what people have, not realizing it was wisdom that built what they have. But they just want what they have. No, you, you, you get in the cart before the horse. You, you've got to understand wisdom. Wisdom can flow from people around you. The person who's right next to you can have the answer that unlocks something you've been, you've been wondering about. So if, if you would just humble yourself and say, hey, listen, I, I, don't, I know I come to church and I look like I, I've got it all together and I have all the answers and, you know, God forbid you know something that I don't know. No, we don't carry that, you know. It's like, hey, I, I bet you do know stuff that I don't know. Hey, talk to me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs 3, 14 from the NLT, it says, Wisdom is more profitable than silver. So say amen. It's more profitable than silver. And her wages are better than gold. Wisdom is far better than, than money. Amen. Verse 15 from the NLT, Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire completely can compare to her nothing you desire nothing you desire can compare to getting to getting wisdom the secret isn't getting resources how can I make more money it's the, it's, you've missed it you've missed, you've missed it wisdom amen because you don't want stuff that you don't aren't supposed to have you understand verse 16 Proverbs 3 16 it says, she, wisdom, it's talking about wisdom, offers you long life. You want to live long? Oh, man. And in her right hand and riches and honor in her, in her, her left hand. You know, in our, in our culture, they place a high premium on hardships. In, in, in fact, especially in the UK, I've noticed this. I don't know if you noticed this, but people brag about their problems. Um, you know, have you, have you seen that? Hey, what, you know, what happened to, to your knee? I see you got a brace. Oh, you know, I, you know, I, I tore my ACL. Oh, I tore, tore my ACL, my meniscus and my kneecap came off and, you know, uh, bounced off the wall. I was next to smacked me in my face and I literally got knocked down, you know. All right. It's amazing, like, how hard your life has been. Let's, let's talk about more of this stuff. They put a high premium on, on hardship. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, you know, so many people are going through, you know, the, the school of hard knocks because they bypassed the school of wisdom. Amen. You know, any lesson you need, you can learn it from, from the Holy Spirit. Any lesson that you need to learn, you can learn it through the Word of God and the Spirit of God speaking directly to your spirit. Amen. He doesn't teach you through pain. He doesn't teach you through hardship and failure. He teaches you through the Word of God. Does He use pain that may have been afflicted to you? 
Absolutely, because he's an expert turning situations, but he's not the author of it. He teaches you any lesson you need to learn. You can learn it from the Word. Isn't that cool? Any lesson you need to learn, you can get a hold of it. You don't have to go through the school of hard knocks. Well, my mom learned it this way, and she went through this, and she went through that. I guess this is now my season. I've got to go through all of that to learn what she learned. No, you could humble yourself, speak to your mom. I say, hey, help, help us in this. You know, uh, and, and eat the hay, spit out the sticks. You know that expression? You've got to discern, you know, what's good and what's not when other people are trying to give you advice. Amen. So I'm not saying don't go to people for advice, but just be, be cautious. Make sure that you pass it through your spirit and it agrees with the word. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there is answers for people here. There is people who need answers. And you're looking in the right, pursuing the answer in the wrong places. And you're settling for certain situations and hardships and thinking, well, this is how I've got to learn this. Not necessarily. No. God can use it. But God places a high premium on his word. And if you don't, you don't, and you bypass the wisdom that's in the word, then you will, it will result in your own peril. Hey, great preaching, Pastor. Amen. You care, care for us enough to give us the truth. Turn, turn to first, first Corinthians chapter 8, please. <clears throat> you all right for a few more minutes? Are you chewing? It says, now concerning things offered to idols, we know that we all have knowledge. And knowledge puffs up. But love edifies. And if anyone thinks that he knows anything, he knows nothing. As he ought to know. Oh, man. If if anyone thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing. Yet, as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, this one is known by him. It's beautiful. Hallelujah. Knowing God, being known by him, is far greater than what you know. So it goes back to what Paul said. I'm coming into a place of revelation. Visions and revelations of the Lord. You know him. You know everything you need to know. Because you know the one who gives you all the answers when you need it. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3, 10. From the NLT translation. God's purpose in all of this was to use the church to display his wisdom. So ask the question, you know, what's the purpose of you being filled with wisdom? I'll tell you why. God, God's purpose in all of this, what we're talking about, it was to use the church. Who's the church? Are you the church? We, we're, we're the church. To use the church to display his man. One translation says, his man of your, your Bible said that, manifold wisdom of God. It's in its rich ver- variety. Wisdom. Oh, glory to God. That's the purpose. To showcase how good God is. Not for you to be puffed up and go, look how much I know. No. Look who I know. And look who you can know. And look how you can enter a personal relationship with with the Lord. Who is powerful. It's beautiful. And it's simple. And that's what I love about it. Because too often we've overcomplicated our Christianity instead of just... Just, just yielded to him. Verse 14 goes on. This whole passage is just loaded. I mean, we should probably just read it all, but look at verse, verse, um, verse 14. It says, And when I think of all of this, I fall on my knees and pray to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we have a Father, church. We have a Father. We have a Father. We have a father. I go to my dad for, you know, I ask him questions about all kinds of stuff that I don't know because he's lived longer and he's experienced more stuff. And I said, said, I said, Dad, talk to me. And he does. And, you know, in the fire room in, in their house and they just talk. 
and I hear and I learn. And he tells me the same stories that I've heard before. And, you know, we, we hear them over and over again. And I always, from my father, there is so much wisdom that comes. We have a father that you can sit in the living room with. Come on, somebody. You have the spirit of the father, the Holy Spirit who came. His residential presence is within. You can sit at the fireplace at the fire and hear him speak to you but if he's a father makes me a child which makes you a child and that makes us family that makes us family whether you like it or not your family is your family you can't change that you can't change that some, some people would like to change the family but you can't you were born into that family. Amen. When you got born again, you were born into the Christian family. And this is why we have to w- gain wisdom from one another family. Amen. And, and I think it would be a great idea to learn how to love one another. Has anyone ever been hurt by any, any, any person before? Anyone? Amen. Yeah. Has anyone ever been hurt by somebody in church? Yeah. In this church. Like someone in this room hurt you who in this room hurt you they they looked at you funny they sat in your seat they didn't smile at you they they spoke with that tone you know that tone we we talk about you know someone pointed at you in church why don't we just right now just go huh I'm just gonna forgive them right now I'm going to forgive them. Right now, I make a decision to forgive. This is wisdom on, on a high level right here. It's simple, but it's the Father's wisdom. I release. Self-sacrificial love. I know their flaws. I know their weaknesses. But I've made a decision to love I've chosen to love my family hallelujah it's a choice whether they love me back it matters not for the love that my father in my house has taught me my father God is a love that is unconditional the love that I'll love the person who hurt hurt me is a love that doesn't fluctuate, doesn't change. It's not like the stock exchange. It's not, it never changes. It's constant. His love never crashes. His love is consistent. (laughs) And it's the wisest thing you could do. It's the wisest thing. I had a challenging thought this, 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 this week. I feel like I'm just in the living room. I feel like we're just talking. I feel so relaxed. I don't feel any pressure. It's great. I could, we could talk like this for hours. Mark 11, 25. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. If you have anything against anyone, anything, no matter what it is, anything, anything. No matter how brutal it was, it doesn't matter. you got anything against anyone, this is so strong, forgive him. That your father, that this is Jesus speaking. This is the challenging thought that I had. That your father, that your father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive him. Neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. And I thought, Lord, people who don't walk in forgiveness, they're not saved. How can they be? This is probably the wisest thing. 
you can hear right now. If you are walking in on forgiveness, no matter what it is, it matters not. Whatever the inflicted, whatever it has been, whatever, whatever, I know this is tough, I don't know it, you know it, you felt it, you went through it, you experienced it, you have memories of it, I don't. But no matter what it is, there is a power that can come on you right now. There's a power in you by, by the Spirit of God. If you're born again, the Spirit of God lives on the inside of you. The love that I'm talking about is in your heart. Romans 5.5. 5. The love of God, the love of God, not, you know, someone, some other love. The love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. It's been given to you, poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. With that love, you can release that person. And if you don't, have you made any mistakes before? Come on now, it wasn't just them. Have you ever made any mistakes? All right. You want that forgiven? All right. It, it, all of that hangs in the balance. It's all dependent upon you forgiving somebody else. You can forgive them right now. Love without reservation. Without trying to even self-protect. Love right now. Right now, you're right now. The wisest thing you could do. Right now. You could say, I forgive him. I forgive him right now. I forgive him. Say it. Is it just me who needs to forgive? I'm looking around. I need to forgive you and you. I need to forgive you. There's so many people to forgive. Oh, man. No, I'm, jo- I'm, joking. I'm joking. Father, thank you. Thank you for love. Thank you for love. Thank you for love. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. A warrior filled with wisdom ascends into the high places. Come on, church, it's a year of lift. A warrior filled with wisdom ascends to the high places and releases regional breakthrough, breaking, bringing down the strongholds of the mighty. Whew, glory to God. Come on, you can't be bound anymore in that grief and that pain of what they did. The wisest thing you can do now is be filled with that spirit of wisdom. Take on board, remember, wisdom and application. And when you do, whoo, you're sent to high places. You break down every demonic f- fortress. The enemy has tried to build to prevent and slow you down. I'm telling you, it all breaks. Whew, hallelujah. Amen. You need to get out of that prison of unforgiveness. I see it. It's like just churning over in your mind and you're sat in like the cell of like a prison. You, you, you cannot set other prisoners free if you're sat in a prison you can't go to the other prison who's ever been to prison before you know okay Uh, you can't be you can't suddenly go to all the other inmates and say hey listen I'm going to get you out of prison tonight if you're in prison right why because if you break out they're going to they're going to catch you they're going to arrest you they're going to shoot you if you're in America they'll probably shoot you here I don't know but if you're at, but if you're a governor, if you're a person, if you're, if you're a judge outside of prison, come on, someone, then you can get people who are in prison out of prison. Amen. Psalms 149. Psalm 149 verse 6, it says, Let the praises of God be in their mouths and a sharp sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and the punishment punishment of the people to bind their their kings with shackles and their leaders with iron chains to execute the judgment written against them. This is the glorious privilege of his faithful ones. Praise the Lord. That's our privilege. Thank you, Father. I I sense sense a freedom and a release. 
You're getting out of that prison of unforgiveness right here, right now. The wisest thing, this is not a focus that I came behind this pulpit with, but it's I can't get off it. You're coming out of that. I see that picture. You want to set the captives free? You want to be a help and a, a help to other people and see people liberated? All right. You've got to get out of the prison yourself. Woo, hallelujah. You've got to release them. You've got to say it out of your mouth. I forgive them. I forgive them. I forgive them. I forgive them. And then, Holy Spirit, what is it that you want me to do for them? What is it you want me to do to be a blessing to them? Hallelujah. I forgive them without reservation. I forgive them for what they've done, what, they, what they're doing, and what they're going to do. Woo, my forgiveness is retroactive. I mean, my, forgive, my forgiveness. Nothing's going to stop my forgiveness. Woo, hallelujah. Come on, live like that. I'm going to live perpetually free. I'm, I'm like a duck. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to call myself a duck. Like water off a duck's back. It's going to hit me and then it's going to fall off of me. Yeah, yeah, nothing's going to offend me. Yeah. Offenses will come. It's impossible for them not to come, Jesus said. But I will be an expert of being unoffended. I'm, in fact, yeah, that's it. I'm a duck. I'm an unoffendable duck. Yeah, that's who I am. These are great confessions of faith. Come on, man. Amen. Come on, don't leave me alone. I need some engagement. Come on. Amen. This will keep you free. This will keep you close to the Father, knowing I'm forgiven. Woo! Come on, what ought to be front and center for every believer is I'm a giver and I'm a forgiver. I'm a giver. I'm going to give people help. I'm going to help people with wisdom. I'm a giver and I'm a forgiver. Front and center. I'm a giver. Man, I'm walking wisely. This is wise. It is so wise. I want to experience the Father's love. And not because he wants to give, he wants he's not holding it back, you understand, but but your forgiveness is preventing that. Hallelujah. It's keep, you're keeping yourself away. Thank you, Father. I'm gonna park up right here. I feel like we need to be on our feet just for I know we got baptisms and things like that, but man. You know the Bible says, just give me a minute. The Bible says the Bible says a lot of stuff. But the Bible says specifically in Proverbs 20, verse 5, that the, the counsel of God is in the heart of man. But a man of understanding will draw it out. Amen. I feel another song coming. 